What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Food Truck Scholar Podcast. I'm your host, Ariel D. Smith, and I appreciate you for choosing to kick it with me for yet another episode. I get this question a lot. Is it better to buy a new or used food truck? Now, granted, this answer varies on the person, and we've had several guests who have discussed purchasing used food trucks or even building their own trailer. But we haven't tackled the pros of buying a new food truck for those who want to weigh all of their options. Bob Truen and Greg Knox of Russell Barnett Ford of Tullahoma stopped by to give us insight on the benefits of purchasing a new food truck and specifically a food truck that is built with a Morgan Olsen chassis. We also discussed the importance of finding a good food truck builder and our projections for the food truck industry and the restaurant industry at large in the wake of COVID-19. But for now, sit back and relax. The show starts now. So everyone, I am very excited about today's guest. Um, You know, I'm always looking for people who are quality folks who know what they're talking about and have information to share with you all. So I am very excited that we're in Tennessee now with our guests. Uh, I actually met one of them at a food truck festival in Indy. And from there, we've just connected. So do you mind, uh, Bob and Greg, just introducing yourselves and where you're based? I'm Greg Knox, and I'm based in Hendersonville, Tennessee. And I'm Bob Truen, and I am based in Tullahoma, Tennessee. All right. And so what do you all do for a living and how that plays a part in the food truck industry? We, I am the, I am the commercial sales manager for Russell Barnett Ford of Tullahoma. And we are a, you know, a Ford dealer. Um, and about three years ago, I got interested in the food truck business and, and, um, wanted to provide an outlet for people looking to buy new food trucks and also for the outfitters that do the work on them to find a, a source where they could get their chassis. Um, Morgan Olson happens to be a, well, they developed what's called the foundation food truck chassis, and it's actually a wide body chassis. It's designed from the ground up for food truck applications. So in other words, your stud walls are all there. A lot of your holes are already drilled through the stud to run your wire runs. Um, you know, it, it's just, it's just a, a, a great, it's a great palette to start your work of art with. Does that sound good? Sounds like a plan to me. And, you know, I enjoyed our conversation when we, uh, when we talked on the phone, Bob, earlier, because you really broke down to me, like, uh, what the chassis is and like, why does it stand out um, Morgan Olsen above the rest in, in terms of like the space that you have, the centimeters are, are higher dimension. It gives you more uh, space to work with and that, you know, you may not think that a couple of centimeters would make a difference, but they make a whole lot of difference. But what we found here's, you know, this is what's really interesting. Most of the business up until now has been done with used step bands. And the the problem we see with that is that nine times out of 10, when those step bands hit the market, they're from a, a big commercial operation. And so they've, they've been used a lot. Um, when, you, when you take a, a regular step band from one of those vendors, it's usually, you know, it's a 93 inch wide chassis. Now, when you take a 93-inch chassis and then you add, most of them have a two-and-a-half-inch stud wall inside. So once you put your interior wall on, then you're down to about 88 inches of usable space. Now, where that comes into play is that a lot of states are starting to require a certain size on your center aisle. And also, it just makes sense from the standpoint of being able to move around in the truck freely especially if you have more than one person working with you. So the Morgan Olsen truck, with its one-and-a-half-inch stud walls and everything, gives you a true 93 inches 
to work with. That's five inches more than your older trucks. Plus the fact that by going with a new truck, a Morgan Olson, uh, we offer a full warranty. Um, and that's something that you don't usually get with a used truck. Now, I, I've heard the horror stories. Everybody else has heard the horror stories of when they buy the used truck and they spend a lot of money putting the kitchen in or doing whatever they're doing. And then three months down the road, you have a major engine problem with it and you got to take it in. Well, you know, it's not just the cost of having it towed in. It's also the loss of revenue that you experience because that truck can't be out making money for you. And, you know, I'm glad that you brought this point out because I get a lot of questions about should I do use, should I do new? And I've seen arguments on both sides and we've had a lot yeah. of people that have talked about use. So I'm happy to have you on the show to talk about the benefits of a new truck and the things to look for um, when purchasing a, a new truck as well. Right. Here's the thing, you know, Morgan Olson, uh, they build all of the UPS trucks. Now, their trucks are built on what we call a 25-year life cycle. So in other words, that's how, that's how they build their truck to last that long. Uh, so we find that, you know, when a person buys one of the Morgan Olsons, I mean, they're getting a vehicle that's going to last 15, 20 years out there for them. Um, the company has excellent customer service, excellent backup, and then also the way they build their vehicles. And it's, you know, it's great for the end user. Um, let me tell you, like the body panels, they're all made on a machine. Uh, if you have a problem and you have to replace one, the new panel comes down and all the rivet holes are in exactly the same place. So it's much less time consuming and uh, more labor friendly when you have to replace those type of components. Because maintenance is, is a serious deal. Uh, how much goes into maintenance on average for a used truck in your experience per year? Quite a bit. Um, and, and I think that, like I said, you know, I, I do a lot of business with the uh, wholesale baking industry and they use the step vans. And so, you know, I sell them usually 50 to 100 at a time. And as far as maintenance, we actually started putting extended warranties on them because really all Ford builds is the powertrain unit. So, you know, so anyways, we started doing that because, again, they, they do have to be maintained. you got oil changes, you got this, that, so forth, alignments. So, you know, that's one thing about a lot of that stuff is covered under your warranty for your first three years or 36,000 miles, actually five years, 60,000 miles on your powertrain. So that's a, that's a real benefit because today, you know, you can go in with a, with a bad engine that can be eight to $10,000. You can go in with the transmission that can be four to $5,000. So again, all these things are, are taken into consideration when you're looking at, you know, do I purchase a used one or purchase a new one? And, you know, I, I thought a lot about, like, even in my case with my car, like, even though it's not a food truck, I had a used car originally, and everything was going all right for a little while. And the next thing I know is, like, just a list of things just started falling apart. And it became a better deal in my own personal experience for me at that moment to get a newer car for the warranties, uh, just peace of mind. So I do recognize that there's... Yeah. Yeah. You know, I do recognize there are going to be some people that, um, you know, they go to a used food truck, which is, you know, that's fine. Like everybody starts somewhere. But then there's also the possibility to think about new food trucks. Now, the other question that comes into mind is once they get the chassis, they get all of that, the, the building aspect. And okay. I've had. I've had a lot of guests or, or not necessarily guests, but even people in passing that may have gone to a food truck builder and was ripped off. And so yeah. uh, what are some tips and strategies of like how to avoid that? Um, how have you been able to avoid that in your partnerships? Yep. What we do, what Greg and I do is we actually go out and we visit our upfitters. We go to their place where they're building these trucks. We want to see how they're building them, how they're doing business. Um, we want to look at their reputations and just get to know them. I mean, you know, we're in this together. 
But what we try to do, we probably have 35 or 40 upfitters around the country that we work with, providing them their chassis. And then also, as, as we get leads off of our website, we try to partner people with, you know, we give them choices of uh, four or five different places for them to talk to. But I encourage um, my people that call me that are looking to buy a food truck is I'm going to give you four or five different places. I want you to call them because the most important thing is how are you relating to them and how are they relating to you? Do you feel comfortable? Do you feel like maybe you're hiding something or something like that? So, you know, it's always very important um, that, uh, you know, that we, we, you know, we go out and we find out really what these people are all about. I have been to places. Um, I've re- been referred to builders and, and I've talked to them and they've invited me up and I get up there and they actually build one truck at a time in their driveway. Now, again, if I'm spending a hundred plus, hundred thousand plus on one, I want to make sure that person is going to be there to back up what he's built. Another thing that we have with Morgan Olson is Morgan Olson keeps a list of preferred upfitters and these are people that have been loyal to Morgan Olson but also they have showed that that their preference for what you know what we have um, helps their business and also then if we, we don't mind promoting those people as well okay mm-hmm. another thing about the about the the used food truck business is they're very difficult to get financing on food trucks in itself present certain challenges um, and, and a new truck, uh, is a new truck. I mean, you know, it, it, it's got warranty. Everything about it is brand new. So a lender looks at it from a different standpoint than a used one. Another, another issue that, that we run into with the, you know, with the, with the people that, that we're referring people to, and also in the financing end of it, you know, here's what, a, here's what a lender has told us recently. He said, Bob, here's the thing. You know, if a person is buying a $100,000 Ford dual wheel pickup truck, you know what I mean? Um, And he comes in and he's got a good credit score. Well, you know, we don't have any problem financing that because we know what that is. When it comes down to a food truck, you've got a box that you're putting a whole bunch of stuff inside and mainly with your appliances and your different, you know, things, your, your hood, your, you know, your sinks, everything that goes in that truck becomes part of that truck. But there's also a risk factor that if that person decides to let that truck go back, is he going to strip out the inside of that truck and take all the appliances out and try to sell them to somebody else and leaving the lender with just a bare shell. So mm-hmm. as far as the, the, you know, as far as the, um, equity or whatever it is, you know, the value there, that value includes everything that's in that truck. So again, these are some of the questions that lenders throw at you when you're looking to finance a truck. So, you know, they want to feel, they want to feel warm and fuzzy and comfortable that, you know, you're going to take this thing, you're going to make a successful business out of it and probably buy more trucks eventually, but really is their risk factor. One of the things that you said that really stood out to me and I really want to uh, drive home is the fact that you provide four or five options for people to take a look at because it's ultimately, right. you know, caring about are you vibing with these people? Do you get along with these people? Uh, do you feel right. comfortable? Because ultimately buying a food truck, especially if it's brand new, is an investment. Right. And you want to make sure that you feel comfortable with your investment. I've had people on the show that whether it was them or people that they know have spent 50 to $60,000 on a food truck that never materialized, that never came out. Um, And so it can be a very daunting space. And, And just like any industry, you know, you have to be very guarded about who you enter into partnership with and who do you trust and who you choose to invest into And one of the things that stood out to me when we talked earlier, you know, was um, the the level of care that you are going to to make sure that there's a quality experience. Mm -hmm. Our mission really is, you know, we are a supplier of the food truck chassis 
which is the starting point for all food trucks, okay? And because of the, the size we are and the volume that we do, you know, we, again, we want to make sure that we provide a pleasant experience for our customers because really we're stage one. So you're going to come to us or the upfitters going to come to us and say, what do you have on chassis on the ground? And we stock them anywhere from 12 foot up to 24 foot. So, you know, there's a, there's a lot of, a lot of choices there, but, but also um, we want to make sure that when they do go out and talk to different upfitters and vendors, we want to know, do you know much about them? Did you check their background? You know, we have, if they're one of our, our people, you know, so again, we, we kind of watch the whole process through. Now, here's one, one thing that's very important. We offer a financing program our, on our food trucks. So when a person comes to us and we finance the whole truck, the build out and everything, um, we handle it all. We hold the money in escrow. So in other words, when we send that truck down to the builder that's going to build out the kitchen, we give him a, we give him 50% deposit up front for him to get started doing his build. And then we have two more draws, 25% in the middle and then 25% on completion of the truck. So it's not, you know, we're never letting the, uh, the builder have carte blanche with the money. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. So, you know, so those are, I mean, those are some of the things that, that we try to do. But again, also we, you know, we, we talk to the people and ask them, you know, what kind of, what kind of thinking have you done to this? What kind of planning do you have a budget set out? Do you know what size truck, you know, I always tell them that this, I sell anywhere from 12 to 24 foot. However, get yourself with a good builder and have him lay out your kitchen. And then he will tell you what size truck you need to be looking at to do what you want to do. You know, I appreciate the fact that you're taking the time to walk three, uh, walk people through it, because this is something that is new for a lot of people. And yeah. it's always good to have someone that can bounce questions off of. Because mm-hmm. at some mm-hmm. point you'll be like, you know, I never thought of that. <laughs> and then you realize, oh, well, I probably should think of that. That's a pretty big deal. So yeah. I want to ask Greg, because Greg, is you're the field guy. Like we met at the food truck festival. You know, you're in the field. You're talking to people. I think the way I connected to you is I had just grabbed my food. And I heard you ask the uh, the food truck owner who built your truck. And I looked up. I said, oh, let's have a conversation. I was like, oh, this is great. So what is it like for you <laughs> being out in the field, um, going to festivals, going to different um, food truck manufacturers? What is that experience like? Well, it's been a lot of fun in, in a short period of time. Bob and I have been doing business together since 1998, and we've done all kinds of, you know, um, we did explore vans together. We've done a lot of car deals together, and then and we've done a lot of truck deals also. But when he and, and started entertaining for me to join him with the food trucks, you know, the outside sales thing is what I like to do. I like to just travel around. And he and I have been to Florida. You know, we've been kind of restricted with COVID, but we've been to Florida twice already. We've been to Michigan. He took me to the plant right out of the gate about three months ago when, when I, when I joined him, but he's really just kind of grooming me for, you know, I'm just listening to him because he's a wealth of knowledge of what's going on, but it's really basically just taking care of people's needs. But what I, what I have found out from these upfitters that we've been visiting, we can build you a, a Chevrolet pick up, a Chevrolet food truck or a, I say Chevrolet, in a kitchen, a Chevrolet kitchen or a Cadillac kitchen or a Rolls Royce kitchen. So, you know, you can spend as little as, you know, 40 or 50 grand, or you can spend as much as 150 grand. So it really depends on what kind of kitchen you want to put in. And there's different builders for that kind of deal. So there's, you know, different appliances and all that kind of stuff. And I'm just learning a lot about that kind of thing. So, but like Bob says, the upfitter really needs to get with the customer and discern what kind of their budget and what, and what they, what kind of kitchen they want and how long it's going to last. You know, I mean, with a 25 year truck, this investment is going to last forever. But another thing, I talked to a lot of people in the field that are already doing trucks, and and these people are telling me they're doing from five hundred to seven dollars, seven hundred dollars an hour in business, 
and that's and the most of them are working three you know three and four hour shifts a day. They're not working you know from can to can like a lot of the trucks do or have you know have been. So if you can go into a neighborhood thanks to COVID and work from four to seven and pick up two to three thousand dollars every day and with you yourself and a couple of people, that's a win win situation. No fees off the top, no, you know, no and the neighborhood people are glad to see you because they can't go to the restaurants. So that's that's another thing I've learned. And so I just kind of dealing with some franchise people that are going to build more trucks, uh, dealing with some of that kind of stuff. And but uh, a lot of the upfitters, you know, they're calling us every day. And as Bob said, I mean, we're selling more trucks than, than ever just in the last couple of weeks. Everybody's all of a sudden, you know, needs trucks. So it's a supply and demand thing right now, which is it's good in a way. In another way, it's kind of sad because when we don't have what they want and they got to they got to wait, you know, a month or two or three. So uh, it just depends, but it's it's a growing fast business. Someone told us, Bob, we were talking uh, uh, that that if you didn't have a way to take your restaurant mobile or delivery in the next couple of years, you would not be in business. Next five years. Next five years. Yeah, we we someone I don't know who we, who we actually got the information. Charles told us that. Yeah, right? one of the buff fitters. So. It's fast. The restaurant business is fastly changing. I feel sorry for these people that have spent their life in a restaurant and then COVID shut them down in a brick and mortar. In a brick and mortar, you know, and it's and it's. But the brick and mortar people are are wanting to get out into the food truck where they that they're not as regulated, not as shut down. They can go to another place. They can go go to different locations and then do business. So it's a very very exciting thing. And Bob is kind of the guru, and I'm just kind of following along and. But it's it's a very very exciting time, and, and we're we're happy. It was, it was a really nice meeting with you and, and running into you there. And I was hoping there would be more trucks there, but the, there were some good quality trucks there. That's pretty much where I fit. So next week I'll be going to Michigan to pick up a, the, the trucks we have coming off. I'll take drivers up and we'll pick them up. But it's the quickest way to get them moved. So and we'll run up the same one day and back the next. And. Uh, but it's it's an exciting thing. Now, Bob and I did drive one to Florida two weeks ago each and dropped them off. He but told me about that. Doing, yeah, we probably won't be doing that again. <laughs> we'll probably be letting the, the other guys do that. It's, they drive and ride great, and they run 76 miles an hour, but the noise is pretty. Well, it's an empty shell. It's an empty so shell. It's like loud. a big, yeah, it's, yeah. They're, they're loud. Yeah, exactly. It's so an echo chamber. But what we, actually, what we actually did, though, what we started doing, we know, one of the the first time we went down to Florida, and we met some of the big players down there in the food truck business, and they said that, you know, they were doing a lot of used trucks because that is what was available to them. And, and so they said, you know, we'd love to do new trucks. We just, we don't have a place to get them. So what Greg and I talked about with our dealer is, you know what, maybe we should take one of our trucks to, you know, get, put a truck on at these upfitters locations one of our new trucks and we just sit them there and that way when they have customers they can take them out and show them what a new truck looks like and the difference between the two of them and, and we did we did a couple of different places in florida i know i don't i don't know if i should name names but anyway um, and they've been very successful they both sold the models we put down there and they've reordered plus more of it so it allows them you know so instead of trying to paint a picture, they can take the person out and say, here's what we start with. And here's the Morgan Olson, and here's the quality, and here's the things that, that they do that other people don't do. Bob, you had told me that you were thinking about bringing the truck down there, and I wanted to know if you did it. So I'm excited to know that it, it happened. I remember that in our yeah. last conversation. Yeah, we did that, and and as a matter of fact, we have to take two more down to replace the ones we took down two weeks ago because they've already sold those, and they said, look, we want to have one of these on the ground all the time. Um, and, you know, we're kind of factoring that into our, you know, our stocking levels and so forth. But I think this year we will probably do 100 food trucks um, out of this location, and next year we're hoping to almost double that. Well, in doing that, you know, we're going to have to up our supply. And plus, what we're trying to do is keep up with the demand. In other words, everything has its season, every size. Certain times of the year, people buy 16 and 18-foot trucks. Certain times of the year, they buy 22s and 24-foot trucks. So it's learning that curve and being able to order your inventory, assuming 
what you're going to need for any given time so you can fit, you can, you know, meet the demand. I love pointing this out because, um, you know, we often don't think about like the size of the trucks and like which sizes are in season yeah. and which ones aren't. But I also want to go yeah. back um, to a point you and Greg were talking about earlier was about the, the shift in trends now for going yeah. mobile. You know, we've talked a lot um, as a society about going, you know, online and going, you know, online orders, curbside delivery, all this type of things. But now more than ever is a push to go mobile. And you're right. Like even before COVID, we saw restaurants like Waffle House. We saw restaurants um, like McDonald's has a food trailer. Uh, We started seeing the traditional brick and mortars transition into having um, a mobile component to go along with the brick and mortars that we're used to. I remember being in Columbus and I saw a McDonald's cafe trailer, uh, even certain yeah. Walmarts, you'll even find like a mobile trailer for like a Walmart now in some uh, areas as well. What they're starting to realize is this, that in a brick and mortar, here's the simplest way I kind of describe it. In a brick and mortar solution, you have to draw the money to you, to your brand. In a mobile situation, you're able to take your brand to the people where they're at And it's a wonderful way to sell your brand or get it out in the marketplace and see how it's going to do before you invest in a brick and mortar. Absolutely. We've seen that happen in a lot of different cities where there's pitch competitions where they actually will pitch for a food truck. And part of yeah. their whole pitch is that they're going to, you know, circle around in two years, build up the, the clientele, the following, and then they land brick and mortars and they've been successful. Um, I'm thinking of one particular food truck in Birmingham that they pitched, you know, was able to land some funding, uh, started with the food truck, did the food truck for about two and a half years or so, uh, got their first yeah. location and now they just opened up their second location um, not too long ago. <laughs> I've had um, a gentleman on my show. He runs Trucklandia, Case Erickson. He talked a lot about how a lot of funding opportunities are actually uh, going more towards funding food trucks over the brick and mortars if you provide your initial plan because they want to see if you can scale. So it definitely is something that people have been talking about that has been a push in recent years. And I think COVID did nothing more but just exacerbate that. And now people are seeing the model. It was um, not too long ago where people looked at food trucks as roach coaches and uh, are they clean or should I eat there? Is it really going to work? Is fledgling? Like all these different type of things. These are, these are gourmet establishments today. Yes. Yes. You know, and people are starting to see that. I think people are starting to see that, um, with the television shows, with just, you know, them becoming more and more apparent in communities, food truck Fridays, food truck festivals. Yeah. Uh, my little brother, I'm getting him a, a Fisher Price food truck <laughs> for him to play with. And that's why we have Greg, too, or even myself, because, you know, we like to go out. You know, the, the success that I've had in the truck done this over the years is my ability to go out and network with people and find out what they want. And, and so when I'm ordering my inventory, I have a good idea of what I'm going to sell before I order it. And, and the same thing holds true with the food trucks. By getting out there and talking to the people, you know, the food truck owners, the upfitters, and mostly the owners, and find out, you know, when you built your first truck, what did you run into? What were the, what were the complications? And, and you know, you, if you elected to go with the used truck and you've had it for a year or two now, you know, what have you found? What are your feelings about that used truck versus if you would have gone new? So, you know, we are seeing a trend, but again, everything is, is related to the price. Now, one thing that's surprising that, you know, here's how I'm going to look at it. If you go out and you buy a brand new food truck or you go out and you buy a used truck someplace, the, the kitchen that you put in that truck is going to cost about the same, whether you do it in a new truck or a used truck. So what you're really sacrificing is the maintenance and the and the you know the workability of that used truck that you buy the platform I should say. Mm. You know, I'm grateful to have both of you on the show 
And I hope that, you know, as later on down the line, we can continue to have you all as guests on the show. Oh, absolutely. We'd love to. Yeah, I think it's great because we need to hear different, you know, standpoints of it. And I like to tell people, you know, I love where I am as the academic and the journalist, because what I do is I'm going out and like you, I'm networking, I'm figuring out, okay, who are the food truck builders? Who are the food truck owners? Who are the app developers? Because I want to know what every sector is doing. And what's the changing dynamic? Absolutely. Because I won't know all of that and I'm not going to be the expert in that, but it is my responsibility to learn who is, connect with them, see how they engage with people. And if they engage with people the way I engage with people, let's have them on the show so that we can have a dialogue about what's happening, what the trends are looking at, what things people need to think of, and let's flow from there. You know, what's interesting is um, one thing that that has happened since the COVID, when when all of the fast food restaurants, your McDonald's, your Chick-fil-A's, your Wendy's, everybody, they had to shut down and they could only do delivery or carry out only. OK, mm-hmm. well, even when they lifted their restrictions, a lot of these places found that they could make just as much money doing carry out and delivery that they could have in the additional real estate to have people sitting in the restaurant because really People didn't want to go in and sit in the restaurant. They wanted to social distance. So a lot of these fast food uh, restaurants that we've been to, they still have not opened up their dining rooms, and they don't know if they're going to open them up again. Mm. Even Pizza Hut. You know, Wendy's is not a good example. Yeah. McDonald's. Yeah. Pizza Hut is closing their pizza places. They're going to go to a carry-out only, you know? Oh, yeah. You know, there's actually some locations... Um, that I had seen that were only takeout only. I'm thinking about models like uh, a checkers or in in the South, we call it rallies. Um, I'm thinking about Sonics, you know, um, or dogs and spuds up here in West Lafayette that have always had a drive in walk up to go takeout model. Like these are restaurants that we would look at and was like, "Eh." Okay, but we never really saw like how critical that model was until COVID because these are yeah. restaurants that really didn't have to change their model. Sonic has always been drive in, it's always been drive through, it's always been you can yeah. walk up and have like those few little seats out front. Like th- that's always been his model beyond, you know additional precautions with the workers and who could be in, you know, space and, you know, how tight the building facilities are beyond that, as far as how they engage with customers really hasn't had that much change. Correct. Well, I think, I think that this has been a very interesting uh, conversation and, and I think it would be valuable for us to continue this, you know, again, and, Again, let's keep sharing ideas and let's, you know, we all learn together. And, and you know, this business is not, you know, I'll tell you a funny story that when I was back in 1985, I was living in Wisconsin and I made the decision. I had enough of the winners up there and I called some people I knew at Ford and I said, where can I go where it's warm and I can still sell trucks and I don't have to worry about these darn winners. And they said, you need to go to Florida. So I called some places down in Florida and, you know, got some interviews lined up. And when I finally landed a place, I told my boss one day, I said, listen, I'm moving to Florida. And he said to me, Bob, they've been, Florida has been growing for 20 years now. It's about done. I think you're jumping in on the tail end of it. I don't think you're going to be able to survive down there. And, and look what's happened today. Well, the same thing is true in the food truck business and everything else. You see what I mean? It's not going away. It's going to get bigger and it's going to refine itself and it's going to get, you know, I mean, we see, we see different businesses popping up with these trucks and trailers and everything that just would astound you, but they're doing it right. And, you know, and it's all about going out and taking care of the people's needs. And that's basically what food trucks do. 
I couldn't agree more. So if people want to continue the conversation with you, perhaps they want to talk to you about getting their chassis or like good places sure. where they can go to build their food truck. How can they connect with your company, with your brand? Well, they can. Okay, now, we have a website called um, it's www.foodtrucksforsaleusa.com. And that has a wealth of information on it about the trucks and about what we do and so forth. It also has our contact information um, and our phone numbers on there. And, uh, you know, we're very um, approachable, or I should say, um, we answer our phone. Listen, I give everybody my cell phone number because that's where my business is. I don't sit in an office all day long. I don't have the time for it, nor do I have the desire. I want to be out. And and so, you know, my my cell can I give you my cell phone number? Absolutely. Okay, my cell phone number is six one five four five six four zero four zero. And Greg's uh, cell phone number is six one five three zero zero eight two eight six. Both of us can be reached at mine is B Truin at RussellBarnett.com. And Greg's is Greg Knox at RussellBarnett.com. So, you know, our email's on the website and everything. But listen, we love talking to people about it and taking the time. And, you know, it's not something that you can't do this in a quick sale. I mean, you know, no. you have it's a process. And you have to be able to be patient and answer a lot of questions and, you know, just really fine-tune the thing before you ever approach the fact, well, let's go ahead and make a decision. You know what I mean? You Absolutely. Know that. And I thank you for taking the time to come by here and to share, mm -hmm. you know, just a wealth of information already in this conversation that I'm sure is going to be uh, beneficial for a lot of our listeners. So I thank you both for stopping by on the show. And I look forward to continuing this conversation and having many more conversations in the future. So do we. Absolutely. Thank you, Eric. That's all for today, but I want to say thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Food Truck Scholar Podcast. Are you a part of the food truck industry and want to share your company's story with us? Connect with us at thefoodtruckscholar.com slash contact. We would love to have you as a guest for season three. Slots are almost filled, so make sure you grab yours today. Also, we have only a few sponsorship slots left for potential partners to help share information and resources within the food truck community. So if that's you, visit thefoodtruckscholar.com slash contact. We look forward to working with you. But until next time, I'm Ariel, the Food Truck Scholar, signing off and reminding you to buy local, eat local, and support your neighborhood food truck. I'll see you soon.